1908. Can we pause this for a second? Because I have to pee, and this is too fascinating <laughs> for me to hold this in. Okay. 1908, Folsom people. Yeah, we'll come back. We'll be right back. Okay. And we're back. So, 1908, they discover Folsom sites. Yeah, the first Folsom site. And, I mean, so, you know, and I don't want to spend too much time on this because this is all the, basically just the first couple of chapters of the of Wild New World. Uh, the rest of it is about subsequent history down to the present. But... But the Folsom discovery is really kind of important in uh, the whole American history story because up until this point, you know, and this is the kind of thing that, you know, the Europeans are really good at, of course, they, uh, they sort of cast dispersions on America because their argument was, you know, America is really marginal to world history. I mean, you guys, we've had, we know that we had people uh, interacting with cave bears and mammoths, and you know, and we have an ancient history going back to Greece and Rome, and and you Americans, you kind of just you know, you don't have much going on at all. And so, what the Folsom site did was to give America an ancient history, a history that made us a major part of this world story. That I was kind of alluding to when I was describing people finally discovering the Americas as the last grand continents on Earth. And what, that, what happened with the Folsom story is that there was, a, uh, there was a flash flood on a river called the Dry Cimarron River in the August of 1908. And in the aftermath of that flash flood, this African-American cowboy uh, named Charles McJunkin is out riding fence for one of the local ranchers seeing what he's going to have to repair and as he's riding along his horse suddenly pitches up and its hooves slide in the mud right to the edge of this freshly cut about 30 foot chasm in the slope that he's riding and when he leans out of his saddle and looks down into this this cut what he sees are bones of a gigantic size that he's never seen before. I mean, this is a guy who he had been on the buffalo hunting plains back in the 1870s, so he had seen buffalo butchered. He knew what bones from big animals looked like, but these were giant bones. And so this guy, McJunkin, started trying to call attention to this site. He never was able to do so and get any archaeologist out or paleontologist out to look at it. Uh, and he dies in 1922, but about four years after his death, uh, this museum curator from Denver, a guy named Jesse Figgins, comes down and brings a crew down. And I mean, what Figgins is interested in, he's sort of an amateur guy himself. He's just interested in some fancy big bones for his museum up in Denver. But his crew starts digging into this site and they began uncovering these giant bison. What they're finding is a site of bison antiquus, these giant bison that became extinct about 10,000 years ago, the ones that the Folsom people had particularly specialized in hunting. And as they're excavating this site in the first summer, they come across, just sort of lying in the debris, a couple of points like they've never seen before, which are three or four inches long and have these thin flutes on either side at the base. There's one right there's, there. Yeah, there's one right there, the Folsom Point. So what Figgins' guys realize is that the hurdle for convincing the world, the scientific hurdle for convincing the world, that humans had been present in America, at the time everybody thought, Indians had only been in America for maybe a couple of thousand years before Europeans got here. But the hurdle was finding an extinct animal out of the Pleistocene, indicating that it had been killed by human technology while the animal was still alive. And the next summer, I mean, it happened to be a summer when the Smithsonian had just published an article by some fancy archaeologist saying, you know, uh, North America has no antiquity in its history. Indians have only been here for at most 2,000 years, probably less than that. And within about two months of that article coming out, 
this crew finds the scapula of one of these bison they're excavating with one of these Clovis points embedded three quarters of the way into the bone. And at that point, they stop digging. They call on all the famous archaeologists in the United States. Uh, a guy named Alfred Kidder was the most famous archaeologist in America at the time. And he comes, takes a look, and proclaims this one of the greatest discoveries in American history. So they don't have radiocarbon dating yet, and nobody knows how old this is. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want some more current JRE clips and check out some of these stunning shirts. Link below.